hello and welcome to my next video in the Dark Elder Unix review section. Now this one's going to be um, the elites. With seven different elite choices and only three slots that you can use in anything other than Apocalypse or a special game, you're really gonna have to pick and you're gonna have to pick and choose what you're buying like getting wisely in the army because there's a lot of variety from the very good and close combat Hecatrix Blood Brides um, up to the infiltrating but sadly useless Mandrakes. There's loads. There's loads that you get on this one. Anyway, stay tuned, and I'll um, I'll go through each of the units and their good and bad points. Thank you. Okay, then let's start with the Incubi. Now, for 22 points each, you've got what I can just I can kind of say is more or less a Space Marine with a power weapon. Okay, which is which is pretty good. He's got um he's got a higher wep he's got weapon skill five usually. His ballistic skills not too good, but they don't have any sort of well they don't have a any ranged weapon so it doesn't really matter. Strength and toughness three like everything. Um only one wound which I find is a bit odd. Um a bit odd considering what they are. Initiative five which is pretty it's pretty standard actually. Two attacks and um a leadership eight. But the but the best thing about them is their Incubus Warsuit gives them a 3-up armor save, which is, barring Drazhar, which has a 2-up armor save, it's the highest you can get in this codex. So it's pretty good. It's also got something called a Clave, which is um, basically a giant 2-3, um, it's, it's a giant razor blade with several handles on it, and you can use it in many different fighting styles. It's a power weapon with plus 1 strength, so they're always strength 4 in reality. Um, one of the Incubus may be upgraded to a Clavex as well for 15 points. Oh, and the unit size is three, from 3 Incubi to 10 Incubi, which is pretty, um, a pretty standard size for most elites, 3 to 10. Anyway, you can, ha you can, you can be upgraded to a Clavex, one of them, which is the, basically the squad leader, and um, may be given Demiclaves, which instead of just like one big blade, it's two small ones which can be clasped together as a giant blade. And can you have plus two strength or plus two attacks which pretty good pretty good he's also got um he's also got something he can take called a bloodstone which i think is the um the broken spirit stone of nailed out or whatever it is and can make it fire out a blood boiling psychic power or whatever which is kind of odd considering their stance on psychic powers being evil and the only sin you can take you can do but you can also take a raid or a venom, right? For the same amount, of po for the same points as usual. Now, the incubi are perhaps one of the best units in you can get in this codex, and I would always pick one, pick a squad um, to buy to to fly around with my um, my archon or succubus, okay? Because they are actually that good. Anyway, yeah, they're pretty pricey, but um, I'd definitely say take a squad take a squad put of um four put them in a venom and add your hq to them and you'll be fine anyway um yeah thank you up next it's the grotesques okay hey guys um our next our now new one is going to be the grotesques now we'll be looking at this for 35 points a model right you've got um an ogrin size homunculus construct um, not very good weapon skill, and the ballistic skill is pretty crap as well, but then again, the only upgrade weapon you can get is a template, so it doesn't matter. Strength and toughness 5, which is amazing, considering the Dark El Elder. Um, 3 wounds, which does, which does kind of add a bit of resilience though, to an army that's pretty much made of paper, and flies cardboard boxes. Um, it's got initiative 4, attacks of 3... Um, a very very low leadership, so you're gonna want to keep him. Um, you, you're gonna want to keep like a homunculus with him. Not only that, for another reason as well that I'll go into in a second. And only a six-up save, but considering his three wounds, that's and his um five-up toughness, and that's not too bad. To be honest, 
But yeah, the reason you're gonna um, there's several things he's got. He's got a close combat weapon, which is pretty standard. He's got night vision and power from pain, as everybody else has. He always starts the game with a ping token, though. You got to remember this, because I almost did first time I used Vax as well, and, uh, and I got screwed over for that. Anyway, he's also got um, they've also got a rule called Berserk Rampage. Now this is a complete hindrance to everybody. If your grotesques do not include an independent character of at the beginning of every movement phase, you roll a d6, roll a dice. On the roll of one, the grotesques go on a rampage, inflicting 2d6, strength 5, AP nothing hits on all units within 2d6. And this doesn't just affect foes, guys. This is going to tear apart your units. And considering they always, considering they always hit on the side armor against vehicles. That's pretty bad. Afterwards, as well, they di they pretty much they're dead. You can assume that they either shot down or they got, or they just died from exhaustion. Also, got another bad rule: bulky. More or less, if you um if you want to put them in a transport, you're only going to be able to have a, a unit of five, which I don't know is pretty crappy. And if you want a homunculus in there as well, you've got to have a unit of four. Because they always count as two models in transports. Anyway, thoughts on the grotesques. They're good. They're good if you want to tie up units and just and like disrupt them. But unless it's unless it's because you want to convert them or you want you've got like a homunculus themed army in mind, I wouldn't buy them. But yeah, that's just me. Anyway. Um, thank you for that, thank you for um, staying on and I'll go on to the next item which is Dark Eldar Rex. Okay then, our next unit is the Homunculus Servants of the Rex. Now for the same cost as a witch, um, you've got more or less the same profile, I think maybe minus an attack, but plus one strength of touch plus one's toughness which is pretty good you also you've got a six up save like beforehand and instead of a splint pistol which is pretty n in the norm you've got two poisoned weapons of that always wound on a four plus which is pretty good if you wanna um, I've seen people take down big big monsters by just getting a unit of ten and throwing them at anything like Carnifexes, Avatars of Cain, Bloodthirsters, all of them will fall below the double swords and Piss off, Sophie. You've ruined this shot. Thank you, you turd. Sorry about that. Um, it was my sister. She was just being an idiot and peering out the door trying to make me laugh. Um, anyway, yeah, they've got, um, like I said, that profile. They've got the same three. They've got the two main um, special rules. Night vision and power from pain. Everybody has this. No fleet, though, which I find is a bit odd. And um, they've also got a rule, Altered Physique, which means they always start with a pain token. Okay. Um, for every five models in the squad as well, one rack may replace his poison, one of his poisoned weapons with a liquefier gun, which is a flamer with a D6, with a D6 AP. And I hate you, Sophie. So, but that was my sister again. Um, <laughs> you can also upgrade one rack to be an Akafist, which I've... I don't know if I've just um, said that right, but basically it costs the same amount as buying another one and you've got an extra attack, an extra point of leadership and the options to take any of the following. A splint pistol for 5+, plus, which is a bolt pistol that always wounds on a 2, which is nice. Venom blade, close combat weapon always wounds on a 2, you know guys. Um, mind phase, so it's a weapon that I think stops um it's it pretty much stops you uh, stops um whoever you wound and not kill from attacking for another turn. Hold on I'll check this a sec. But I'll just check this for sure. Um hold on mind phase mind phase mind phase um A bit embarrassing. I can't find it now. But anyway, yeah, I think the mind phase just just um stops him from attacking. There's also the um the other following. 
things they can get. Um, a hex rifle, which is a brilliant sniper rifle, always an assault, and it just it rolls to wound. It it doesn't even it rolls against your t your wounds profile, and if you fail, you get turned to glass and removed from play. That costs fifteen. Scissor hands cost fifteen. Plus one attack. Plus and it's a poison weapon, I think. Um, flesh gauntlet as well. It's a poison weapon always always causes instant death. Um, the agonizer, which power weapon, always wounds on four plus, and the electric corrosive whip, power weapon half the strength. They can also take a raider and venom dedicated transport. Yeah, like I said, they're very good at killing big monsters, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know, yeah, I would actually. I'd spend a lot of. I'd get a big unit of them. Like I said, hurl them at a monster with a ba with reckless abandon, and kill them off. Kill them off the enemy's big, big beasts. Anyway, thank you. Next up is the. Um, hold on. Let me check. Um, mandrakes, which I'm not a big fan of. Thank you, guys. In every codex. There is always one absolute passive unit for. I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to go through each one of each army because, to be honest, I can't be asked. But anyway, so far for HQ for special characters we've had Kurjuaka, and so, for HQs we didn't really have any. But for elites, okay, we've got something that associates very well with Kurjuaka, and unfortunately it. Um, the unit that's that's in question is not only our only infiltrators, but perhaps some of the best models the Games Workshop have ever sculpted. I am talking about the Mandrakes. Right, weapon skill, ballistic skill, and strength four, which is pretty good. All that, all right already. Strength, no, sorry, toughness three, one wound, initiative five, tax two, and leadership eight. Okay. They've got no customization. All they've got is a close combat weapon and a special, an invulnerable save of five plus, and a shooting attack of bell blast when they get their pain tokens. That's it. The fleet, they've got fleet night vision and power from pain. That's so that makes them not too bad. But they've also, they've also got infiltrate, which would make them a brilliant unit if their, if their stat line matched. Will the unit? They've also got um, move through cover and stealth, and like I said already, invulnerable save with five and bell blast. But the composition is three to ten mandrakes, and each mandrake costs fifteen points. You've more or less just made a very, you've, they pretty much just got a crappy profile and matched it to the, matched it to the cost of a space marine. It's not worth it, seriously, guys. It's not. It's not even worth thinking about. The, the, the only thing you can do to change this unit is have more people and upgrade one to a Night Fiend for 10 points. You pay 10 points for an extra attack and an extra point of leadership. That is not worth it. <sighs> but anyway, yeah, I wouldn't take them. I wouldn't take them if my life depended on it. Okay? Even if I was being paid to take them, I still wouldn't unless it was to paint them and, that, and then I'd probably sell them all when I got bored of that. But anyway, and the tragic thing is, the fluff is brilliant as well. The fluff is good. The models are amazing, and yet the rules crashed bad. Anyway, yeah, I'm not a big fan of these guys. All right, stay tuned, and I'll be next on to the Harlequins, which. I don't really like either, they seem a bit pointless. Find out why. Thank you. Now, like I said with the ma like with the Mandrakes, the Harlequins, they're not really a very good unit. They seem pointless to me. Uh, I mean, for five for five less points, I could buy some Hecatric Blood Rides and they would be a ton better than this. But anyway, I'm gonna go on now. Um the composition of a Harlequin unit is 5 to 10 Harlequins, and each Harlequin costs 18 points. So, not very good. Um, the normal Harlequin's got weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 4, 
Strength and Toughness 3, 1 Wound, Initiative 6, 2 Attacks, Leadership 9, Death Jester, follows the same same profile as this. Troop Master gives up, has a, um, for, for, hold on, 20 more points, you get nothing by the looks of it. And for a Shadow Seer, you pay 30 points for a Psyker with one Psychic Power that isn't even very good. But, anyway, they've got a close combat weapon and a shuriken pistol, which I'm not quite sure of the, I'm not quite sure of how good it is because GW being, being sometimes Muppets didn't put the profile in, they just said see the Warhammer 40k rulebook and I haven't got it with me. Um, they've also got, they've also got, um, what else have they got? Well, flip belts, which means they ignore difficult or dangerous terrain I think because they can just front flip hollow suits they've got a 5 up invulnerable save Hecatrix all around Hecatrix blood rides and as general witches they have a 4 up dodge save in combat and yet being an almost naked in combat it, Harlequin should have some sort of like rule where they're able to hop out the way of everything or I don't know teleport but apparently no being an almost naked witch gives you much better protection than being a servant of the laughing god. I don't know. They've got Hallucid oh no wait, that's a shadow here. They've got Fleet and Dance of Death. That's about that's about it for their um that's all of their um rules. They don't have power from pain or anything. Which I think is I think these are the only guys in the code in the entire codex without power from pain. Well, non infantry any well own any the only infantry ones that don't have power from pain, barring the Urgles. Anyway, the dance of death means they have the hit their furious charge and hit and run, which is as far as it goes, it's not too bad. But they've also got um they've also got something called a shrieker cannon, which is strength six. I think AP something, AP five assault free weapon, not too good, but mm. um troop master. Troopmaster, Troopmaster, Troopmaster. Ah, Troopmaster doesn't have anything unique about him. And the Shadow Seers, they're the only psychers in the codex, like I said, and they're crap. But, they're not too good. You also get Fusion Pistol for 10 points. Not very good. At, they're, they're the only melt non lance melter weapon in the, in the entire codex. But, no, for 10 points, it's not too good, I'd say. Unless you're unless you're planning to assault vehicles and then nah, I suppose. Um you've also got a choice of a Harlequin's Kiss, it's a rending weapon. Just get witches, they've got just get the Hecatrix Blood Rides, they've got tons of different exotic weapons. They've got a better save in combat. They've got a better profile in combat. And they're cheaper. Why and Plus, they're not even allowed. The Harlequins aren't even allowed to embark transports, which sucks. I would have thought you would have at least got a Venom option because the Harlequ the Venom was meant for the Harlequins in the early days of when the Harlequin Codex was around, and you know stuff like that. But they're not even allowed that. So why buy these guys? Why take these guys if Hecatrix's Blood Rides are so much of a better deal? You tell me because I've got no idea. No idea. Anyway, thank you um, for watching. Our next is the Cabalite Treeborn, which I think it's a Cabalite. Yeah, it's a Cabalite Treeborn, which I kind of see as a heavy weapon squad. Nothing more. And I quite like it. As far as I'm concerned, guys, the Cabalite Treeborn are sort of a mystery. I can't see why they weren't put in the elite section they seem to be such a bet they seem to be more useful for for um, a heavy weapons unit than as in the general elite unit more or less these trueborn guys they were born normally and not in a big tube like most dark elder as such they've um they've got the same profile as normal cabalite warriors but plus one strength no not plus one strength plus one attacks plus one leadership and that's about it really. 
they've got the same the same basic stuff as a Cabalite Warrior. They've got they but they cost 12 points a model, and um, it's f the minimum's three instead of five, like most of the of the elite choices in the codex and almost all codexes. Anyway, any model in the unit may exchange its splinter rifle for either a splinter pistol and a close combat weapon if you want to turn them close combat. But if you want a close combat unit, don't buy them. Buy Hecatrix. And um. And you've also got the shard carbine, garb carbine for five points a model. You get um 18 inch range, but you get an extra shot. You get um it's assault free, I think. If you um if you do choose a shard carbine, they can also um like I said beforehand, you best this this is a heavy weapon unit. Pretty pr pretty unambiguously, it's a heavy weapon unit. And the reason I say this is because you can replace up to four of your cabalat tree wounds. Um, splinter rifles or whatever you can replace with either a uh, shredder for five points, which no, it, it's not a good, it's not a good um, piece of kit, guys. You could just get a blaster, and it's a lot better. And a blaster, which is 15 points, strength eight, AP two, lance weapon, which quite good, quite good. Um, You've also got um, the choice of up to two of your Cabalat Tube when you place the splint pist rifles with either a splinter cannon for ten points. If you want to mow down infantry, you need to get two splinter cannons and several shard carbines. And um, if you want to bust tanks, you want four blasters, two dark lance guys, and nothing, and just a unit of six, you know, in a raider circling for tanks. Although if you if you do go infantry grinding, you're gonna to want to put them in a raider as well. Just use them as a mobile platform, just continuously circling like a shark. That's the way. It's, that's good. That's good. Um, anyway, you've also got the choice of taking plasma grenades for one point or haywire for two points, which is still a good, still pretty, a pretty good deal actually. There's also um, you can upgrade one to a dragon, which is. Yeah, for five points instead of ten points, which is pretty good. Although the only thing you get for this um, deal for five points is an extra attack, and if you are caught in combat, which, like I said, use the raid attack, they can you won't be caught in combat, and it's pointless. He may take ghost plate armor, the dragon, for ten points, which gives him a four up armor save, which means if you're hit with like a, I don't know, a space mean bolter, you can try and save it by putting it on the dragon. But anyway. And um, you can just take phantasm grenade launchers, which you're not going to need, guys, because, like I've kept saying, this whole thing, you probably noticed, but keep them in the radar, they won't get assaulted. Um, the Draken may replace a splinter pistol with a blast pistol, which is probably the only decent upgrade if you want a gunman unit, to be honest. You can also, ta you can also take um, one of the three normal um, close combat weapon upgrades, venom blade, power weapon, or agonizer. You know, it's it's like that with every every army, but they can also take, like I said, raid or venom. Tactics for this guy, I'm just gonna say, um, you put you stick a squad of like six in a raider, okay? Four blaster guys. If you if you want them to bust tanks, four blaster guys and two dark lances in a raider with a dark lance, or or if you want um, tank, or you, if you want infantry chewer, you want a raider with a disintegrator cannon, four shredders, and a splint cannon. Which is, which um, if you put that combination on a fast-moving transport vehicle where everything can fire, nothing will, f nothing, everything will slink away from you because it won't want to be torn to pieces. So yeah, I'd say one of the one of the very good elite choices in the game and. Plus, you can get a very big unit of 10 of them for 15 quid just by simply buying the Cabalite Warriors kit because they are completely identical. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, next up, the Hecatrix Blood Brides. Um, a brilliant close combat unit, but is it worth its is it worth its weight in points? Let's find out. Okay then. Hecatrix Blood Brights. Let's get this um let's get this done then. Thirteen points a model, you've got 
which is with an extra attack and an extra point of leadership as standard um, they come with they come with the same um, they come with 3 to 10 Catrix blood rides and um, well you're able to um, they've got the same war gear outlet as a normal unit of witches which is a close combat weapon and a splinter pistol a witch suit which provides a 6 up save combat drugs plasma grenades and that's about it really they've got the four three special rules that all dark elder have fleet night vision power from pain and they've also got a four up save from dodging which is an invulnerable by any other name for every three mod instead of for every five models as per the witches units um, it's for every three models in a squad you get um you get to replace us you get to displace a um a Catrix Blood Ride, Splinter Pistol, and Close Combat Weapon for one of the following. Razor Flails, rerolls to hit and wound. They could have just said Lightning Claws that don't ignore armor, really. Hydra Gauntlets, plus D6 attacks, which is good. Shard and Impaler, reducing every body, every enemy in base contact attacks by one, which not too good, really. I don't see why, unless you're going to go with character killing, with just one lone man. Uh, or woman, I don't know why you're gonna. I don't know why you'd bother with it, really. But then again, that's a mystery to me, I suppose. Task squad may be armed with haywire grenades for two points a model. Don't know if I said this already, but three to ten people in a squad. Okay, like as per norm for all elites in this codex and most codexes as well. Also, one blood ride for ten points may be upgraded to a siren. All she really has, other than um, to make her stand out from everybody else, is an extra attack. And the fact that she can place a splint pistol with a blast pistol. A phantasm grenade, she may take a phantasm grenade launcher for 10 points. Blast pistol costs 15. It's kind of a universal cost all over the codex. Um, the venom blade, 5. Power weapon, you know what that does, 10. Agonizer, 20. Poison weapon, weighs wounds on a 4+. plus. Um, Venom Blade always wounds on a 2 plus. Doesn't ignore saves, sadly, though, but you can't have everything. Anyway, thoughts on Hecatrix. With my witches, with my normal witches, my best tactic is is um, two Cabalic Warrior units circling like a um, like a big hungry shark, picking off any any big units that might threaten me. Just using them as like a mobile weapon platform. The witches, you're able to, um, the witches I do the same with, but instead of keeping them in the transport, when they get close to something, I fly them over the unit, with taking some out with chain flails, chain snares, sorry, let them, let the witches disembark and assault the un weakened unit, hopefully killing it off, then they re-embark, fly somewhere else, disembark, charge, and you, you get the picture, I just complete the cycle all over and over and over again. Anyway. Yeah, the witches, the Hecatrix blood rides are quite good. I'd, if I got a few, if I get a few, I'm probably going to do the same tactic as what I use for the witches, but with a lot more special weapons that I can get from this um this big unit. Anyway, thank you. Up next, up next after this after this video, it's going to be the troops section, which is going to be pretty small considering there's only two troops but I'll probably throw in a dedicated transports as well. Thank you and good night.